Hello everyone, this is Josh and as you know, I'm a data engineer at Google and today is a special video because this is the first video I'm making after reaching 10,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you enough for it and I'm really grateful for this community and as a way to pay something back, I have a special surprise for my subscribers just by the end of this video. But before that, we are going to talk about ChatGPT. Well, ChatGPT is already threatening a lot of jobs, especially in the creative department. If you're a content creator, if you're a story writer, script writer, then it's very easy for an AI like ChatGPT to replace your job. And I actually tried to prove that thing by posting something on LinkedIn. This post was actually generated by ChatGPT. I'm going to link it in the description below. Yes, I made some changes and added some personal touches, but apart from that, it was all ChatGPT. Now this panic is obviously spreading in engineering world as well, that what if an AI like ChatGPT is able to replace engineers or developers? Well, that's why being a data engineer, I thought, hmm, let's find out. This video is sponsored by Board Infinity and Praxis Business School. More info on them later. In this video, I'm basically going to ask ChatGPT how to create an end-to-end -end project. Granted that this project is a small one using only three, four different components, but I will be doing exactly what ChatGPT suggests throughout and find out that if there are any limitations. Spoiler alert, there are a lot of limitations. And then in the second part of the video, I will also cover some functional aspects that a data engineer might run into. For example, joining a table with something else also, or or suggesting some QC checks that I can apply on a table. So all these things also will be figuring out through ChatGPT. I wanted to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you post any question or comment the first two hours of uploading this video, I'll reply instantly. All right, so let's jump right into creating this data engineering project. So let's ask ChatGPT to create a sample data engineering project that uses Composer, GCS and BigQuery on GCP. ChatGPT will give me a lot of high level steps that I will need to do. There are eight steps uh, that will be involved in this process and they are very lengthy steps. So for now, we will just focus on the first four steps that I can do directly from my console. So first I'll create a Cloud Composer environment and name it something like this and select the region and that's it. So after that, I'll create a chat GPT bucket. This is where I'll store my data that I'll need to process. I'll select the region and just simply create the bucket. Once it is done, I'll upload files that I want to process on my bucket. After doing that, I will go to BigQuery and create two empty tables that I'll be loading with my data pipeline. So first of all, I'm creating a data set here and then I'm creating two different tables in the data set that I just created. Data set is like a database in any other uh, data warehouse tool. So you can see a couple of tables created. Now the first four steps are done. Now next step is write a Python script that uses Composer's environment package to process data from GCS and load it into BigQuery. So let's just ask chat GPT the same question. Here is an example. So it gives me a good example. Now this video is sped up, but one of the cons that I've observed is that it is too slow to write down long code samples. Now this is obviously a very small limitation. I'm just nitpicking here, but ChatGPT is usually very slow if uh, it's giving you a big code as an answer. If you just want a simple code sample, it's much faster to just Google it and find it on Stack Overflow. But after it was done, I just copied it. And now all I have to do is replace some of the values. For example, I have to replace the bucket name with the chat GPT bucket, which is the actual name of the bucket that I just created right here. After doing some of these replacements, I looked at the data and saw what exactly do I want to do. So identifier is a good column in which I can apply some space removal. I'm going to keep the transformation as simple as possible. So I asked chat GPT to remove spaces using a pandas data frame. It gave me two possible approaches. So, and I just selected one of them and pasted it in my code. Now in the previous step, it said cloud composer and environment should have access to GCS and BigQuery. So I asked chat GPT how I can do that. And it gave me a good process to follow. It looks pretty simple. So I just have to 
go to console, go to IAM and then select the service account of Cloud Composer and give it access to BigQuery Data Editor and uh, access to Storage Data Viewer. Now this account already had Storage Admin Viewer. I'm not going to make any changes here. So now it has access, everything is sorted. And the next step is use Cloud Composer to schedule the script to run regularly, such as daily or weekly. So let's ask ChatGPT. Now instead of script, I'm just going to modify it a little and write Python script. And as you can see, it is telling me to use Python operator and it's also giving me a code sample. And it has also uh, given me a gcloud command to create this tag finally and push it into the composer environment. So I copied the code, I made some changes according to what was required. And then let's push this file tag to composer. As ChatGPT has given us this command, it should be pretty straightforward to do it. And I just copied it, pasted it and replaced the path of the DAG Python file here. But I'm, I ran into an issue. Now, I would, I'm not sure why it was. So I basically just typed in gcloud help composer DAGs import. And I looked at the documented command and it was different than what ChatGPT was suggesting. So I went to Google and uh, just searched for this particular gcloud command. And after opening, I found out that the command that ChatGPT suggested what was not really accurate. Now, this can be because the ChatGPT data is obviously until trained until 2021. So it's possible that gcloud command composer to import DAG might be different at that time. Now, this is a big limitation of ChatGPT. Since the data is only trained until 2021, it's possible that it might not show you the latest commands. And if you are running the latest packages or programming language versions, then you might run into issues. And in this case, I had to go out of ChatGPT and Google it. There was literally no other option. So this is definitely a big limitation if you are trying to replace an AI to act like a developer. After running the command after Googling, it worked well. And then the DAG was uploaded. While I was waiting for DAG to be uploaded, I found out that there's a prompt of open DAGs folder in my Composer environment. It takes me back to a GCS bucket that is created by Composer. And inside that, I can see that my DAG file is present right here. Why couldn't I just upload a DAG directly from UI rather than typing in a gcloud command? So I asked the same question to Google. The documentation said that there are four different ways to do it. Console, gcloud, Python, API. Now ChatGPT only suggested me the gcloud way, but console way was much simpler. So this is again uh, another one of the limitations of ChatGPT. Now this third limitation was kind of annoying to me because I knew that there was a simpler way of uploading a DAG through console, but ChatGPT suggested me a gcloud version. Now I knew that ob obviously there's a way to do this from console, which is an easier way, but not everybody knows that, right? So if you're going through the ChatGPT route, you're basically wasting a lot of time. I've seen actually this problem multiple times that ChatGPT kind of withholds information and shows only the one possible option, and which is kind of annoying. I mean, just, just show me everything that's possible and then I'll select the best one out of them. After uploading, I ran my DAG, but it failed, as you can see here. And then I looked at the log. I found out that there was an error in one of the pandas transformation. So the reason was that pandas data frame was expecting a file path or file like object, but I was providing a byte that was downloaded as a string from GCS. Now this line was suggested by chat GPT itself. So I thought, okay, let's do one thing. Let's give the error to chat GPT as well and ask it how to solve it. It gave me two possible solutions. And then I took one of them and replaced it in my code and it worked fine. Okay, now this limitation is also kind of funny. This AI suggested me a code which I ran, it ran into an issue. Whatever the error was, I asked back to AI and then it gave me the correct answer. So if you knew the correct answer all along, why not just show me the actual code, the right code from the get-go? This was one thing where I couldn't figure out why chat GPT behaved like this. If you have any thoughts about it, let's discuss in the comment section below because I'm confused here. After everything was done, I went to BigQuery and then uh, checked if the data is loaded from my composer environment. And yes, the data was loaded, it was present. 
and I also did a little count star to see how many entries were there for different keys. All right, so we saw that uh, there are definitely some limitations that, you know, maybe code generating too slowly, uh, older commands that does not run anymore, withholding some information and only showing some ways of doing things, and also sometimes just suggesting a wrong answer straight away. We need to understand that this project was very small one, like it only used three components, the data was only moving from GCS to BigQuery, but real scale, real life data engineering projects are much more larger and complex in real life. We might have hundreds or even thousands of data sets that need to be moved from A to B and B to C and also ap apply a lot of transformations in between. I don't think ChatGPT or anything, any AI will be able to replace what a data engineer does in that scenario. I did find one more promising use case to use ChatGPT. This was more like a functional use case. So let's take a look at this one. This time I asked that I have a table that has customer ID, customer name, customer account number and customer order ID. How should I join this table with the order table? So it suggested that you should join it based on audit ID and it also gave me an SQL command example. After that, I went a little deep to ask what are the quality checks that you would recommend on this customer table. After a while, ChatGPT gave me a lot of different types of DQ checks that I can perform on this table. Now this was impressive. After this, I gave that, can you give an example of SQL syntax of 0.5 mentioned above, which is the outliers, how to identify an outlier in a particular column. It took an example of age of a customer and with a SQL syntax, it also showed me the outliers. So now ChatGPT obviously makes your job a lot easier. If you had to create 50 different DQ checks, the AI was able to suggest you 10. Now you only have to think about rest of the 40, which is specific to your business or your customer or to your use case that obviously an AI cannot know. So I think that's the key here. Rather than looking at ChatGPT or these AIs as your as a threat to your job, think of it like another tool in your arsenal. Just like you have Stack Overflow, GitHub, Google, etc., Kaggle. Now you have ChatGPT that can make your job a little bit easier. So now you can basically delegate some work to AI that AI does better so that you have more time to focus on what a human can do better. And this way, the overall productivity would increase. But the world of AI, especially with the launch of ChatGPT and Dolly, is definitely picking up pace. And Microsoft, as we know, purchased a big stake in ChatGPT. And I'm pretty sure Google and Apple would also not be far behind in terms of their own AI products. In fact, we have already seen the capability of Google Assistant or Apple Siri. And I think ChatGPT launch would only ignite the fire in these competitors to keep launching these AI products in an improved way. If they keep doing it, then uh, I don't know, 20 years down the line. While thinking about future of data engineering, have you thought about your future in data engineering? Well, if you want a deeper dive on various aspects of data engineering, like roadmap to becoming a data engineer, or real life use cases of data engineering through different webinars and masterclasses, you can register in the link that I've given in the description and in the comment section below. And the best part, it's completely free and you get an opportunity to network with professional experts and mentors. These webinars are done in collaboration with Praxis Business School and Board Infinity. And if you are really serious about career in data engineering, then I would recommend their nine month post graduation program in data engineering. The program has 127% average salary hike and the median salary is about 13.5 LPA. And the best part, you can upskill yourself in data engineering without having to quit your job because it's a weekend only program, so your schedule won't be hampered. I'm going to give both of these links down in the description and in the comment section, so feel free to register yourself with them. But since right now we are in the present, in the present, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Now coming back to the special surprise that I have for my subscribers, you might have known that in the description, I usually give a top mate link. Now this top mate link is for you to connect with me one on one in case you need any mentoring on data engineering. And all of these sessions have been paid. But now I will give an opportunity to three subscribers who need to connect with me, but without really having to pay anything. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, drop a comment that why you need to connect with me and also drop your email ID. So in case you are selected, I can reach out to you easily. And that's it from my side. See you guys next time.